And it got him thrown in the den of lions, didn't it? Or, no, wait. Yeah, the den of lions. The friary furnace was the other guys, right? Did Daniel knowingly, willingly disobey the secular governmental authority to obey God's word instead? Did he also willingly take the punishment that that authority gave him? Yes. Listen, folks. As Americans, to a large extent, we've not had to worry about this kind of stuff. Like people in other countries have had, throughout, had to throughout history. But I'm telling you, I believe the day is coming where American Christians are going to have to make some hard decisions. How many of you are aware of the fact that there's litigation and legislation right now on the table in this country that would make the Bible's definition of marriage hate speech? A year from now, I could get arrested for preaching from this pulpit that marriage is between one man and one woman. The day is coming where we are going to have to face some of this stuff if things continue the way they've been going. And we are going to have to make some hard decisions. Are we going to stay by the Word of God? Or are we going to go the other way for a political expediency? quiet in here now. I'm telling you that that's the case. Next principle. Believers should know their rights and how their government operates. Come with me to Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. <coughs> Acts chapter 21 and uh, verse 36. Acts chapter 21, verse 36. Notice. For the multitude of the people following after, crying, away with him. And when Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Verse 38. Art not thou the Egyptian, which before these days madest an uproar, and led us out, and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city of Caesarea, a citizen of of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto what? What did Paul do there? He says, hmm, are you really supposed to be doing that? Because I'm a citizen. And because I'm a citizen, you need to let me speak to this group of people. Verse 40, And when he had given him his license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned. Did Paul know the Roman law? Come with me to chapter 22 of Acts. Verse 22. And when they gave him audience unto... The, unto so this is after the, he, he gives his speech. Verse 22. And when they gave him audience unto his word, and they lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. And they cried out and cast off their clothes and, and threw dust in the air. Then the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade him he should be examined by scourging, that he might know whereof they cried so against him. So the Romans are going to bring Paul in and they're going to what? They're going to whip him to find out what's going on here because they're not sure about it. Verse 25, And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, I, I, I just love this. Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Just wondering. I'm just wondering, is, is this really what you're supposed to be doing to, to a Roman citizen who has not been properly condemned? Did Paul know how that government worked? Did he work within that government to his own advantage? Yes. 
Because watch the next part of the, the passage. I, I could just see that. I could just see them tying him up and him standing there saying, oh, you guys supposed to be doing that? Well, why? I'm a Roman citizen. Oh, whoa. Verse 26. And when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said to him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. So that he bought it. And Paul said, But I was freeborn. He was a natural born citizen of the Roman Empire, Paul says. Verse 29, Then straightway they departed from him, and which, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have made the certainty whereof he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands, and commanded the chief priests and all their counsel to appear. What's my point? Did Paul know his rights? Did he know how his government worked? Did he work within the legal limitations of that government to his own ends? If you are ignorant of the way your government works, you need to fix that. Okay? Because any believer should have the latitude and the knowledge to be able to work within the government to their own ends. You follow what I'm saying? Some of this, I don't know, some of you may not have heard some of this stuff before. I don't even know if I've ever teach. So let me ask you a question. How do Supreme Court justices get their jobs? Uh-oh. College government, high school government. How do they get their jobs? Appointed by who? The president and approved by the Senate. Not the whole Congress. Okay? Now, if you don't want a judge telling you that marriage is between a man and a man or a woman and a woman, then you better know that who you vote for matters. Because the people that you vote for then appoint people to these positions that have viewpoints and philosophies that are contrary to the Word of God. But if you don't know how your government works as a believer, and you're just going out willy-nilly voting for whoever it is that you want to vote for, and you don't understand that that stuff has consequences for Christians in this country, for believers, then you're not, you're not really following what Paul's doing here, are you? Next point. Believers, come with me to Romans 13, should pay their taxes. Oh, man. But Brother Brian, they take too much. They spend it on dumb things. They do this, they do that. I understand. We could argue all day about what should and shouldn't be spent. Blah, blah, blah. Romans chapter 13, verse 6. For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom what? Bottom line, we won't go to Matthew. Believers should pay their taxes. And the last point I want to share with you is this. Believers... <clears throat> need to vote their conscience according to the word of God rightly divided. I have never in 10 years of preaching used the pulpit as a platform to tell believers how to vote or to espouse my own political philosophy and beliefs. All I'll say to you about this right now is that when I vote, I vote my conscience according to the word of God. Come with me to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation is where? 
in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, folks, as a believer, I am a citizen of heaven. Left here on this earth as an ambassador. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. A representative of the nation that I represent. Therefore, my primary identification is not with any age demographic, any union, any socioeconomic class, any political party, or any cultural subgroup. My union and identity is wrapped up and found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Above all that other stuff. And when we... Um, make sure I get this right. Therefore, I will always consider the views and beliefs of each candidate or issue based upon the Word of God rightly divided and not the talking points or philosophy of any political subgroup or party. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I'm a member of the church, the body of Christ. I have a written word that tells me what God's standard is. And anything that I vote for should be evaluated based on that standard and that standard only. Okay? As believers, we need to cast our votes in line with God's eternal truth and not earthly political subgroupings or demographics that are designed to cause strife and division. Don't you know that the political machines in this country, regardless of party, are designed to divide people? When everything about our message about Jesus Christ is designed to do away with the things that divide people and, and, and put forth Christ as the head of all things. Come back with me to Titus chapter 3. Look at the end of verse 1. Put, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good what? Believers are to be ready to every good work, folks. The Greek word here translated ready in the verse means to be prepared. As believers, we need to be prepared so that when opportunities for doing good works present themselves, we are ready to fulfill our calling as believers. You follow that? And I'll leave you with Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. We read it last week. Do not be weary in what? Well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The believer is called to good works. The believer is called to obey the government. The believer, unless the government is asking you to do something that is a clear violation and contradiction to the Word of God, as a believer, it is our obligation to obey the government. You've been watching Just Grace It, a production of Grace Life Bible Church. Salvation is free. Put your faith in the shed blood of Christ as the only payment for your sins. If you are interested in joining a community of believers who rejoice in who God has made them in Jesus Christ, call or write to us or visit us online at justgraceit.com.